Hey friends, it is Sam and we are back in my living room. You knew this day was gonna come. I warned you that this day was gonna come. So a little over a year ago, I built this beautiful custom fireplace for our living room. Honestly, don't tell the other projects, but this one's kind of my favorite. Today, we're gonna to be tackling some custom storage options for both sides of this fireplace. Now, you know your girl loves building custom furniture. It is her love language. Mm. However, to help keep this space feeling like it ties in with the rest of this space, AKA the kitchen and the dining room, I'm actually opting to use the same kitchen cabinets for this project that I did for the actual kitchen. I would actually like to get this project done in three days and there is a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Oh my goodness, friends, hi, I'm back. I know, I feel like it's been forever. I'm safe, I'm happy, I'm healthy. Thank you to everyone who checked in. I've just been working on a gigantic project for the past month plus that I cannot wait to share. But in the meantime, I just wanna say hi and I miss you before we jump on into this project. Okay, friends, we are in the shop. This is kind of funny because right now I'm filming this project. It's like end of April, early May, but I'm, 100% positive that this video is not going to be on my channel until September, October. Sometimes when you're doing brand partnership, you can't share certain things until a certain date. And this is one of those, which is why it's taking so long to get this video out. So I'm very curious to see like how the vibe of this garage shop changes in the next few months from like filming now to watching it in September, October when some other things are coming out. But even though the shop may change, this tutorial will still be the same. Because I'm using wall cabinets, they don't have a base. And I can guarantee you that the floors in my house are not square because they're from the 1950s. I'm going to be building a base out of two by fours to put the cabinets on top of. Now it's gonna get a little tricky, but we'll get there when we get there. For now, let's just focus on cutting the two by four pieces for this base with my super fancy drawing. Look at that, look how fancy that is. I'm so excited to build. So excited, let's do it, yeah! So I'm definitely jumping in on voiceover mode throughout this video, but it's so funny to see how excited I am about how much my shop is gonna change back in May because spoiler alert, it literally has not changed at all. Or well, be kind to yourself, Sam, because I did actually do additional work on the floor, but we're not talking about that now. We are talking about cabinets and the space. Let's install it in the living room. This is gonna go here. My floors are so not level in this house. Before I get too excited about leveling, I actually have to cut the base molding away from the wall so that this can be pushed flush against the wall. Once that's flush, I have some shims. I can kind of like level this out a little bit and then attach it to the wall. I'm gonna do the same thing on that side. And then once that's in, I'm gonna dry fit the cabinets and I'm going to get the spacers installed into the walls. All right, so I'm not sure I did a well enough job of explaining this earlier in the video, but basically I'm using wall cabinets as my base cabinets here because they're thinner than traditional base cabinets and my fireplace is only 14 inches deep. The base cabinets are 12 inches deep, but I will be bumping them out a bit to match up with the fireplace later. Those look good. <gasps> so much room for activities. These are ready to assemble cabinets, so they don't actually come assembled, you have to assemble them. I did that off camera because I already have showed you that process in my kitchen video. They're really simple to install and I'm gonna end up painting them a color to match the fireplace. I'm sure you can guess what that means. Luckily though, the hinges are so easy to take off. Everything is already aligned. So I'm, I'm just gonna kind of get everything installed, figure out the spacing, see what makes me happy, and then probably at least do a sanding and a coat of primer today, maybe paint tomorrow. We'll see how far we get. So cool, it's gonna look awesome. Okay, before I get too excited about painting, this is where things get a little tricky. So because my base cabinets are 12 inches, but I wanna bump them out to 14 inches, I did include a two by four spacer in the back of the cabinets when installing them. This also helps make sure they're super sturdy and won't tip over. And I'll be covering that with a 14 inch deep topper later in the process. So you won't even know they exist unless I told you or you watched this video. At this point though, it was ready to paint these cabinets. And since they are already pre-painted, I did have to scuff them up with some sandpaper and give them a couple of coats of primer, sanding in between each coat of primer with 320 grit. All right, friends, I think yesterday was a pretty successful day. I got the bases done. I got the cabinets installed. I got the floor 
level, not the floor level, the cabinets level. I got the doors taken off and primed. I actually last night while I was watching really amazing crappy reality TV also got the cabinet frames painted. So yeah, the color is delicious. I cannot wait to show you. Today's goal was gonna be to get these doors fully painted, then cut all the plywood for the shelves and the countertop, but it's gonna rain. They didn't say rain in the forecast yesterday. This is really just throwing a wrench at things. I think what I'm gonna do is move these cabinet doors out of the way for now and keep an eye on the sky. And then I'm going to get started on cutting down the plywood because I do want to laminate them together to make them like thicker boards. Maybe I'll do that first. We'll let that dry. While that dries, we'll see how the weather's looking. One thing at a time, Sam. Let's get these cabinet doors out of the way. Let's get some plywood into the shop and let's get moving. So I have all of my shelf pieces cut. I want to create thicker shelves, but I didn't want to use two by material because I just want them to look like solid wood. So what I have here is two three quarter inch pieces of plywood. I'm gonna laminate these together, which is really like a fancy way of saying, I'm just gonna glue these boards together to make one thicker board. When I do laminations, I actually like to cut my material bigger than I need. That way, when I glue them up, if anything's kind of like out of, alignment, I can just trim it all up to its final size. And I'm also working in like a custom space. And as we know, nothing is ever straight when you're doing built-ins. I'm gonna have to get creative. So anyway, so I'm gonna glue these together. I actually don't have a lot of clamps here because I forgot to get them from the shed shop. I think I'm gonna like batch clamp these together. So like glue these two, glue these two, glue those two, cause they're all the same relative size. And then clamp as many as I have together. And then I also have my collection of like kettlebells and dumbbells that I brought in as well that I'm gonna lay on top. And then while that dries, we're gonna work on the cabinets. But one thing at a time, let's get these glued up. Let's put on some good music and uh, get to work. All right, friends, jumping in again here. So as you can see, I glued together my boards and because I was short on clamps, I just used what I had. And while those were sitting and drying, I then attempted to paint the cabinet doors, but spoiler alert, I did run into a little bit of an issue with the wind and the weather. I tried to back roll, I tried to salvage. It was a hot mess. I wasn't happy about it. Well, that didn't go as planned. So, ugh, I knew this was gonna happen. Just don't listen to my own advice like 90% of the time. Okay, so basically I was all excited that it wasn't gonna rain anymore. And then I walked outside and I was like, it's actually really windy. And I was like, you know what? It's gonna be fine. And it wasn't fine. This coat looks like garbage. Luckily, this is why I start on the back side of the doors because over the years, I've just like learned my lesson that it's just better to dial in all of these things on the back side since it's not really the side that you're gonna see. I just bumped up the heat in the shop so that hopefully these dry a little faster. I'm gonna have to give it a light sanding and do another coat. And then I'm just gonna end up hand painting these cabinets. It is what it is. I guess the rest of my day is gonna be spent hand painting these cabinet doors, which means that tomorrow I will come back in and unclamp all this. We'll cut these down to size. We'll get some edge banding on there. Start cutting all of the openings for shelf brackets. So on that note, I guess I'm gonna go alternate between watching crappy reality TV and painting these cabinet doors. Tomorrow's another day, right friends? All right friends, we're back in the shop. It's a new day. I'm getting started a lot later than I thought I would get started today, but it's for good reasons because I had a fun Patreon live stream this morning with my patrons. So that was awesome way to start my day. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a Patreon. If you wanna come hang out and join, I have been trying to do live stream hangouts on Discord where we like spend an hour and change together and hang out. So come hang out, it's fun. So now that I'm ready to roll, it's really gloomy outside and I actually don't wanna put these giant lights on. So we're just gonna make this work. I am going to unclamp all of these shelves and then I'm going to cut them down to their final dimensions on my table saw. And then we're gonna install some shelf brackets. So 
It's gonna be good. My goal is to finish these today, so let's do it. Okay friends, so I'm gonna be installing some floating shelf brackets into these shelves. And I have a secret weapon for this. Check this out. One thing I like to do when I get these floating shelf brackets, they're just like long rods. There are two tools I like to use with floating shelf brackets. One is a very long <laughs> drill bit. This is a 12 inch drill bit and it's half inch diameter so it matches the diameter of the floating shelf. It's actually a tiny bit bigger, which is nice because it's not a super snug fit. A self-centering dowel jig. So this is really cool because basically it clamps onto your piece of wood and it automatically lines center for you. And then each one of these holes is a different diameter based on what kind of dowel you're using. We're gonna be using the half inch doweling jig mark with the half inch drill bit, which is gonna give us a perfectly straight perfectly centered, not dowel opening for our floating shelf, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you how to do this in action. It's super easy. I'm honestly obsessed. It streamlines the process. I'm gonna probably be able to drill all of the holes I need for these brackets in maybe 15 to 20 minutes for four shelves, so that's really not that bad. And then um, I'm gonna route out a little channel in the back so that when the bracket is in there, it sits inside the shelf rather than outside the shelf, but we'll get there when we get there. So let's drill some holes. All right, friends, so once that hardware was installed, it was time to finish up these shells with some iron-on edge banding to make them look like solid wood pieces. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I got it in a thicker roll. I'll share that in my materials list below this video. But once that was done, it was time to sand and stain and add some finish before installing into the living room. And one thing I actually just realized I didn't mention, I did not obviously install hardware in the piece that is going on the bottom cabinet. I'm just installing that directly to the cabinet with some hardware, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, after staining and then adding two or three coats of a clear finish, it was time to install all of the shelves in the living room. All right, so I have two problems here. The first being that the walls in this house are not straight. The second being that these barn wood boards are not straight either. So I'm gonna drill a small screw in there. We're gonna pull this out a little bit. I don't even know if any of that was on camera, but basically I just pulled one of these barn wood boards away from the fireplace to see if I can cheat square. Oh, and it worked. It worked, okay. What I may do, I'm gonna remove the trim for now, install this flush to the fireplace. Let's attach this top. I'm gonna do that by using elongated screw holes, screws and washers so that it gives this tabletop some room to move and dance and shimmy and shape. Okay, friends, new day, new attitude, new cup of coffee. Sometimes with big projects, I get to this point where I get overwhelmed and then start making mistakes and I get frustrated and I have to walk away. And that's definitely what happened yesterday. I feel like I was so hell bent on getting this project done in three days that I was rushing through part of the process and I don't wanna rush because I really want this to look good. Today's agenda is to get these floating shelves on the wall. I'm very excited about that. Also to secure these tops to the cabinets because I didn't have the right screws for that. So I'm going to go to Home Depot, but anyway. So to make my life easier for these floating shelves, I actually like to make little templates. This was cut off the back of my floating shelves when I cut them down to their final width. And what I do is I actually measure and I pre-drill some holes into the piece of wood and those holes are where 
the floating shelf brackets needs to be drilled. So this goes up on the wall like this with a level. I drill the holes and now I know that my shelf is gonna be level. Because this is gonna be a record cabinet thing, I am kind of deciding as I go how high I want these shelves to be based on the things we're storing on them, but they will be symmetrical on both sides. I do wanna get this done today, so let's do it. Ugh, okay, so of course I'm watching this back and I'm doing that super cool thing where I block the camera the entire time I am doing something important, so sorry about that. But basically I used the templates to be able to figure out where to screw in the brackets. I was able to hit a stud on at least one of each of the brackets. And for extra strength, I actually took some of the boards off of the fireplace and screwed the end of the shelves into the two by fours in the fireplace frame as well for some added support. But once all of those shelves were installed, it was time for some finishing touches like drilling holes to access the outlets, which I actually ended up installing into the cabinets themselves. I'll share the product that I used. I also capped that off to make it look a little nicer later in the process, but I also added some hardware. And once that hardware was installed, it was time for some touch up paint and some trim. And I know that I really wanted this project to take three days. It ended up taking four days, but it was a four days well spent because wait until you see the way this looks once everything Thing is wrapped up together in a nice tight bow. I think it made a huge difference in the space and I'm so stoked about it. All right, friends, all that's left is touch up paint. And that's all that's left. Isn't it kind of incredible what a couple of cabinets and some shelves can do to a space? I mean, like, come on. Honestly though, I'm really stoked about this little upgrade to our living room. I know I've been talking about adding some more upgrades to our living room as we grow into our house. And this was a really fun and easy project to do. Customizing pre-made cabinets is one of the easiest ways to add some custom touches to your home that feel like you made them from scratch. Now I know I've been away working on a big project, but don't worry, I'll be back on the channel next week and we'll be back for like weeks on end after that in a row because there are tons of projects coming to you really, really soon. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification button if you're interested in hanging out with me and seeing what's in store. But until next time, friends, thanks for hanging in. Thanks for checking in. Love you all so much. I'll see you soon with a new project and happy DIYing.